Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. We're going to go over an example about subtracting rational expressions. And this is going to be kind of involved, so watch carefully at the steps I go through. One, I'm going to try and get a common denominator among my rational expressions. Then, I'll go ahead and subtract the two expressions. And finally, I'll try and combine and simplify my answer in the end. Alright? So let's go ahead and get started. So in order to subtract two rational expressions, I need a common denominator. Well, if it's difficult to recognize what a common denominator might be, go ahead and see if you can factor your denominators, and maybe discover one that way. So if I factor w squared minus 25, that will factor into a w plus 5 and a w minus 5. If we look at the other rational expression and look at its denominator, it will also factor. Let's see what we have here. So w minus 5, and it looks like another w minus 5. All right, so things are looking pretty good. And now I can start to identify a common denominator. So it looks like they both have a w minus 5 in common. But this one has a w plus 5, and this one has another w minus 5. So I need to get them the same denominator. Well, let's see how this is done. First, I'm going to write down the denominators just as they are. So w plus 5, w minus 5, with a w on top. And then this one over here looks like we have a w minus 5, w minus 5, with a 1 on top. Well, I'm basically going to multiply this rational expression by an additional piece, so it will match this one. And I will multiply this rational expression by an additional piece, so it matches this one. So here I'm going to multiply by a w minus 5. I'm doing this so it has two w minus 5's, just like the guy on the right. And over here, I will multiply on the bottom and the top by a w plus 5. That way it can match the w plus 5 on the left. Alright? So by doing this, now all I have to do is maybe multiply the things together, have my common denominator, and I can start that subtraction process. So up top, w times w will be a w squared, minus 5 times w, a minus 5w. And of course, write down that common denominator. All right, what are we subtracting? Well, that times 1 is just going to be a w plus 5. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and run through that subtraction process. So w squared, can I subtract any other w squareds? Uh, well, it looks like there's no other w squareds to combine that with, so that will just stay as a w squared. And then I have a minus 5w minus w. Well, I can do something there. That will be a minus 6w. And it looks like there's nothing else to subtract, so I just have this minus 5 left over. Of course, since both the denominators are the same, I can write that here. Now, to make things even just a little bit simpler, notice how I have two w minus 5s? I'm going to write those as w minus 5 squared. And I'll go ahead and write that w plus 5. All right. So now we've taken care of that subtraction process by putting them together like this. And I want to move on to the last step, and that's to try and simplify it as much as possible. This means if there's any common factors in the top and in the bottom, go ahead and cancel them out. Now, if you can't see any common factors, try factoring the top and then seeing if there's any common pieces. Now, unfortunately, the top actually doesn't factor, which means that I won't be able to cancel out anything else from here. Well, if I can't cancel anything else out, it means that this answer is simplified as much as possible. 
So in the end, our final answer is w squared minus 6w minus 5, all divided by w minus 5 squared times w plus 5. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.